Welcome to our live jam session. Uh, this is the Newark Museum of Art, um, and I'm your host, Daryl Dwayne, for our, our Community Day Celebrating Earth. Uh, we're about to kick off this next part of our program where we get to have a one-on-one -on -one jam session with this amazing band. Um, we have John and his band, um, Bash the Trash. Uh, they put a whole new spin on uh, that idea of one man's trash is another man's treasure, uh, where they take trash and they upcycle it and basically convert uh, garbage into musical instruments. And, and it's kind of cool. So I don't want to steal your thunder. Um, I know we have a little sneak peek of some of what we're looking to expect to see. Um, so for all of you viewing at home, you can ask questions if you're watching via Zoom. Make sure you drop those questions in our Q&A um, at the bottom of your screen. If you're on Facebook Live, just drop your questions in the comments. Um, and to no further ado, uh, I introduce to you John and Bash the Trash. <laughs> in the garbage dump bash the trash was there and they began to thump well the joint was jumping and the band began to thrash you should have heard them bash that trash let's go down to the garbage dump and boogie woogie woogie to the bash trash jump dance 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 to the bash trash jump Let's go down to the garbage dump and boogie woogie woogie to the bass trash jump. It's gonna spotlight us and uh Hi everybody, my name is John Bertles. I'm the co-director of Bash the Trash. Hi, I'm Karina Piaggio, John's wife, also co-director of Bash the Trash. This is our baby. <laughs> and um, uh, you're, actually, you're going to meet another one of our babies a little bit later in a moment. But, um, that would be literal. That would be literal, exactly, as, as you'll see. Um, Karina and I run Bash the Trash, and uh, we're also a couple as well. And we're stuck at home just like everybody else is. So during the course of today's show, we're going to be showing you some of our musical instruments, some of how we make music at home. And, you know, that last video that we saw was really all about how we have fun when we're out in the door and you know working together with musical groups and so forth well admittedly it was made in happier times but hey right but it, you know, we're gonna be happy again so right now we're at home and you're all at home too so we thought we'd put the exact same limitations on our musical instruments um, for our musicians because our musicians are out in their apartments and in their homes and they don't have the kind of instruments that they usually would have with Bash the Trash because they live here with us. So we thought, let's see if we can do some of our music with just the musicians and their music instruments at home. So we're going to show you a quick little uh, video here of what happens when we send everybody to do it at home. Now this one features most of our musicians. With us today, we have two of those, but we'll get into that later. So as you can see, everybody sort of improvised, finding whatever that they could find, scrounging around and, and sort of finding things. And we're going to see a, a, 
a few more of those a little later on as we go through these things. But first, what we'd like to do is we'd like to introduce our musicians. So I'm going to put us up as a gallery so we can see Daryl, we can see Ian, we can see Erica, and I'm going to introduce everybody in turn. Let's start with Erica right here. Erica, I'm going to spotlight you. Hi, Erica. Hi, hi, hi. how's it going? Would you introduce yourself, please? Yes, my name is Erica. Uh, I am here in my apartment in Brooklyn, New York, um, sort of the Flatbush Ditmas Park area. Um, and yeah, I've been in my apartment mostly for the last month or so, just like many of you watching um, have been in your homes. And um, yeah, and I'm excited to share some of the instruments that I've been building out of boxes and other materials uh, as I've been living at home this last month. Right, sort of our, our quarantine orchestra is... is <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Erica, I know you have uh, another life beyond uh, musical instruments as well. Uh, uh, what else do you do? Uh, I also do photography. As you can see, I have a little backdrop here, studio backdrop. So between um, music and photography, those, those are the ways that I spend a lot of my time. Awesome. Right. Okay, yeah. so we're going to move over to Ian here. And uh, Ian is going to be spotlighted now. Hey, Ian, how you doing? Good. How are you? Thanks for having us. And uh, Ian, the, the reason that we said that we were going to show off with some of our babies today was because uh, you are our son. Is that correct? Yes, I'm nearly 30 and still getting referred to as a baby, but I'll take you. <laughs> you are not nearly 30. You're always going to be our I'm baby. almost 29. You know, it's getting up there. <laughs> so, Ian, uh, you know, uh, where are you located? I'm in Washington Heights, Manhattan. Um, so just like Erica, I've been, been quarantined, shacked up in the house. Luckily, I, well, there's my kitty coming out of the closet. Um, luckily, I uh, just moved into a new place. So the room you see here is my studio. So I've had plenty of time to, you know, work on the music stuff and start gathering some materials. It was pretty grim, you know, because we're trying not to order a lot of stuff. So not a whole, much, a whole ton of, uh, of new and in cool instruments getting built these days, unfortunately. Yeah, well, I think it's more trash piles up, but I mean, we have to make sure we use nice, clean trash, and we're going to get to that That's in a second. Yeah. So, uh, like Erica, I know you have another life, uh, uh, Ian. What else do you do besides uh, bash the trashing? So I am I do music stuff full-time. Uh, my other, I guess, job, you would say, is I make house music, um, and my friend and I have a musical group called Truth and Lies, and we you know, DJ all over the city, and these days I've been producing a good amount of music, so... Will you say the name of your duo again? Because sure, it's Truth and Lies. Truth X Lies. Truth, Truth X, X Lies. lies. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, I'm going to take the spotlight off you and put it back on us for a little bit here. Um, so one of the things that we're hoping you do is that you'll build musical instruments at home. And we just got a little, uh, uh, little text from uh, Shirley who says that my nephew and I are in our kitchen making noise. And that's exactly <laughs> what you should be doing right now. So um, Way to go, Shirley. So, you know, we'd like you to do some, collect some simple things that you can use to build musical instruments during our show today. So if you'd like to collect some boxes, it could be a cardboard box like this could be just about anything that has an open container, and you'll see why, because we'll be making a string instrument out of that. Also, if you might collect some tin cans or some plastic containers, but always make sure you check with an adult first. Sometimes, as we all know, there can be sharp and dangerous things inside there. So just be very careful, and if you're not sure, um, for sticks and things like that, we might want to use a pencil or something. We'll get back to that with Chopstick. Ian. Chopstick. Right? We'll get back to Ian with that a little bit later as well. Um, so in a moment, we're going to be asking Erica to talk about the environmental side of Bash the Trash. Because Bash the Trash works with science, we work with the environment, and we work with music. And we call it the three S's, sound, science, and sustainability. And before we go to that, we're going to do a little video. And you can see with this little video, uh, we had, um, shall I say, some technical difficulties? There you go.
<laughs> okay, I never got that part right. I don't know what happened there. We no had matter so how many much times. fun doing that. Yeah, that was that was great. Um, and it was kind of cool because when we did that, that's using a program called acapella. And acapella is a way for you to stream, to uh, not to stream. You can't play music live with other musicians who are in distant places because the technology does not line things up. There's a delay or something called a latency that happens. So if I was to say with Ian and uh, Erica, if we were to all clap together, it wouldn't work. Would, would, yeah, would, would, you, would you two unclap, un undo your mics and let's all clap together. So I'm gonna start by clapping first and then you join in with me. And let's see if we can make it all work together. Here we go, ready? Join in. It's not working. <laughs> Everybody is in their own universe. Right. And that's why we do this, this program. So we send it to one person, they send it to the next, and so forth. So now we're going to make a little switch over into the environmental side of that's Bash the Trash. That's a great idea. And the, uh, we're going to uh, ask Erica to stay on, and we're going to spotlight you, Erica. And Erica, you've been working with Bash the Trash for 10 years now, over 10 years? Something like really, that, yes. You really know the environmental side of things. Would you would you take us through some of the environmental side of what Bash the Trash is? Of course, yeah. So, of course, with a, a lot of you probably have heard about these three very important things that we can do to help the environment, and they all begin with the letter R. So if you think about that, I bet you know what they are, and of course, aha, what they are. Of course, that's <laughs> reduce, reuse, and recycle. And they're actually in that order for a reason, because it is the, the thing that is the most helpful to the environment first, and then going down second helpful and third helpful. So if we think about that reducing, you know, that's really what Bash the Trash is all about, um, is ultimately reducing the amount of stuff we throw away. The way that we do that is by reusing materials to build instruments. And then if we can't make an instrument out of it, then what we'll end up doing is recycling it. So just as an example of something you have in your everyday life, we have this thing called a water bottle, right? Now this water bottle is made out of a type of plastic a lot of people use and it's called single use plastic. If you want, you can say that back, single use plastic. So single use plastic is designed to be used one single time. Now that is actually very bad for the environment because even when people try to recycle plastic bottles, the amount of uh, plastic bottles that actually get recycled is one in 10 right now. So we really need to improve that number. But the very first thing that we need to do is reduce the amount of plastic that we're using. So for example, instead of taking this plastic bottle, try to remember to use a reusable bottle. This one, of course, made out of metal. Um, I can put water in it, juice, tea, coffee, whatever, you know. Afterwards, all you do is you wash it out and you reuse it. Um, of course, that is, the ideal thing, because then you're not using the plastic at all, that's reducing the amount of stuff that you throw away, and that's really good for the environment. Um, before I start talking about the re re uh, reuse, the second most important one, John has some photos to show you about plastic in the oceans and about why it's so important not to throw these bottles away. John, do you want to show them those photos? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so... You know, the reason that we are trying to keep plastic out of the environment is what you're seeing on the screen right here, which is, you know, one of the worst things is, is seeing the oceans of the world are now filled with all kinds of plastic garbage. So we're trying to find creative ways to stop that from happening. Now, what you see is just a bunch of stuff up in the beach, but that's really not the worst of this. The worst of this is what happens when you break them down into little pieces. Then it right. creates something called microplastics. Because plastic doesn't go away, but breaks down into smaller pieces. And the microplastics get smaller and smaller. And as, as Erica mentioned, I mean, it's just a really horrible thing. Now, for example, there's this thing called the Great Garbage Patch. And the Great Garbage Patch is floating islands of trash, which are all around our world. And you can see right here, there's one that's off the coast of California. Just so you get a sense of scale, there's Hawaii over there. This garbage patch is made out of floating pieces of plastic in the water. The red part is where it's really dense. 
So we're not talking that the whole water is like a big island of floating garbage, but there's a lot of this sort of debris. You can see like these nets and this water that seems all kind of pristine back there. That's all full of plastic, floating plastic stuff. The moment you put your eyes under the water, you will see that there's a sea of plastic. So I'm going to bring it back to Erica because I think, Erica, we have some solutions for this. And one of the solutions is what Bash the Trash talks about, which is to actually start to reuse these things, right? Exactly. So there's two ways that I'm going to talk about that you can reuse. So the first way is to reuse it for the same purpose that it originally was for. So if I'm out, I forgot my reusable bottle, I'm really thirsty, running around in the sun, I need to drink some water. So I might have to use this. But after I use it, what I can do is I can go to the water fountain and fill it up again with water. And I can do that over and over again. So I maybe instead of using this one single time, I can use it 20 times or something. The other way that you can reuse it is by turning it into a musical instrument, right? So, and we're, we're doing that with Bash the Trash. So if I have this water bottle, after I drink all the water, I could put some shaky stuff inside it. I could make it into a maraca. I could scrape it on the ridges here. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things that I'm not going to get into, but I know on our website, bashthetrash.com, there's a lot of instructions on how you can do that and what you can do with bottles and other things. Now, if you're reusing it in the way that you're drinking out of it over and over again, eventually it gets kind of gross. It gets a little like old and maybe it starts to smell bad and you don't want to keep reusing it that way. That's when you recycle it, right? So if we can't reduce our usage, if we're done reusing it, then it's time to recycle it. That's when you put it into your bin, the recycling truck comes and takes it away, turns it into new bottles or maybe into a fleece a article of clothing, the really warm, uh, soft material that's actually made out of recycled water bottles. John and Karina have one up there um, that they're showing me. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but yes. Um, so that's, that's a, those are the three R's. Just remember the, the order that we say them, reduce, reuse, recycle is the order of things that is most helpful first. Awesome, thank you, Erica. Yee. So I assume that that extends from bottles to all single use plastic, like uh, plastic uh, knives and forks and uh, containers, that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, single use plastics are one of the things that we Straws. want to eliminate the m most. I'm sorry? Straws. Oh, straws, yeah, straws are particularly bad um, because they're very difficult to reuse and you can't recycle them. And so every single straw, it's this piece of plastic, it's designed to be used and then thrown away. Right. Can't, you can't recycle it. So the straws are really a uh, big culprit about microplastics and other things that can end up in landfills and in the oceans. Yeah, and Absolutely. harming wildlife. And I think actually one of the lessons that we're being taught about during this quarantine is how to make do with what you have. And I mean, there's, there's limited resources. And I think, you know, at, we've been living in this world of unlimited resources. And now suddenly our, our resources are limited. We have to get really intelligent about what we're going to be using and not just think about, you know, what's, you know, not thinking at all, but always thinking for the future. How are we going to keep looking for the future and preparing for the future? So, I mean, we're going to go back and show another quick video of how we actually took some some things and turned them into musical instruments at home. This is another one of our series. You'll see Karina and I playing two of our big instruments, which is called the banjo and the bang cello, and they're some of our string instruments. But you're going to hear our four percussionists joining in, and I think Ian gets in this one as well. The reason is that we have all of our instruments in our, what we call the trash van, but once the lockup started, we couldn't give them to the musicians. So each of them had to come up with their own. Okay, so here we go.
that was a lot of fun to make. You know, I think one of the, my favorite parts about that one was the, um, the uh, Caitlin was one of our musicians there, and she sort of was the one who appeared from underneath. And those three things that she were using, those were measuring cups, metal measuring cups that she had pulled from her kitchen. And so those little things made the, the different sounds. Now, the reason make different sounds is because the science of the way that music works. And we're gonna take a little session here to talk about how the science of sound works. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, the best way for you to understand about how to make musical instruments is to understand this thing called vibration. Now, vibrations are the thing that makes musical instruments work. And every musical instrument well, has something that vibrates. No vibration, no sound. No vibration, no sound. And the best way to show that is for you to feel it on yourself. So what I'd like you to do is to take your hand, put your hand gently on your throat, and everyone please say the words, sound is vibration. Go right ahead. Sound, sound is, is vibration. vibration. And you can feel that there's vibration going on inside there. There's something inside your throat called vocal cords. Take your hand, put your hand in your throat one more time, and everyone say, vocal cords. Vocal, vocal cords. cords. <coughs> now I'm gonna share a screen here, and on the screen, we're gonna take a quick look at what the vocal cords look like, because people don't know much about what vocal cords actually look like. On this picture, you can see, this is called the larynx here, which is that part in the throat that you were just clutching. And then for the front view, the larynx shows like this. Inside the larynx is this little opening called the vocal cords, and that opens and closes to make higher pitches and lower pitches and different sounds. Now, all around the world, people have been building musical instruments for forever, and even as far back as the ancient Stone Age, people were building musical instruments. Here's a picture of Neanderthal flutes that were found in a cave in France. These were made out of antler thigh bones, and they actually play music. Up at the top here, you can see there's a little notch. This is something called a notch flute, and they're very difficult to play, but they're still around. You can find some of these in Asia. Now, the reason that musical instruments make sound is because of the way that vibrations work. Vibrations work into something called waves, sound waves. And what you see here is a little picture of molecules in the air. Everything is made out of little things called molecules. The table that we're at right here, that's made of really hard stuff. But the air that's around us, if you swish your hand back and forth, the molecules are much more, much less densely packed. So when we actually hit something like a drum, that pushes these molecules together, and those then travel in a wave that travels outward, going off in this direction. Here's another picture of that. This. So you have the molecules bunching up and traveling outwards. As they travel, they make this thing called the sound wave doesn't look like a wave. It looks more like a bunch of people sort of bunching up. No, there's definitely no social uh, distancing going on there. Not among molecules. This is more like what we should be right now. <laughs> so that's just a little bit of, of that. But it's all about time with sound because sound travels so quickly. A sound wave travels at literally six to 700 miles per hour. And that's incredibly fast. That's much faster than any car that we can drive and, and faster than a lot of jets as well. So in that sense, we have to think of that sound travels really quickly. So because of that, we need to slow things down. So I'm going to show you a video of what it looks like when you play a guitar. Everybody knows what a, what a guitar looks like, but did you actually know what it looks like when you slow it down incredibly slow? Oh, wow. So you can see those strings are doing all kinds of stuff that you can't see. Because when you slow it down like this, there's things that our eyes cannot actually see because That's our right. eyes are not built to, to view those kinds of things. That's right. So coming back again to, to this. So that's just a little bit of the science of sound. Now how we translate that, that down into the musical instruments that we work is something like this, a simple little pipe. Now this is the kind of pipe that you'd see in your gymnasium, putting electrical wires through it, something like that. If you take a stick and you hit it, what kind of sound would you expect if I'm holding it? You probably expect it to go like a clunk. 
and that's exactly the sound you're getting from it right now. But if I put it down on something like styrofoam, now I'm going to sort of change my camera view here so you can see. <clears throat> styrofoam is a horrible, horrible thing. And Eric is going to sort of talk about that a little bit later as well. But it also works well to make musical instruments because it's so light. And that means that the molecules are pretty loosely packed inside here. So if I put the pipe on top of it and I hit it here, let's just see what it sounds like. So you can hear now it's got a good sound because it's able to vibrate. If I touch it while it's vibrating, you can really hear how the sound changes when you do something like that. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two other pipes. And these pipes are smaller. Now, what happens then is the sound waves are coming off f more frequently. It's not that they're going faster. It's that more sound waves are coming off. With this one, the big one, there's fewer sound waves, and those hit our ears uh, uh, in a slower pattern, and that means we hear that as a slow sound. These faster ones, they come in, they hit our ears in a faster pattern, and we hear that as higher sounds. And there it is. So that's just a little bit of the science behind musical instruments right there. And uh, at this point, we want you to build a musical instrument. So get ready to have your box ready to, and your rubber bands to turn into a musical instrument. And to prepare you for that, we're going to show you one other video. And this is a video that features some of our, our string instruments, as well as some of our other instruments as well. So just uh, hold on a second. Get this set up. And here we go. Well, that uh, video featured some of our other musicians. In fact, I'm seeing on the Q&A here that Caitlin Cawley just uh, came in. She's one of the musicians, uh, the very last one who you heard hitting the bowl at the very end. Uh, that was her playing as well. And then, hi, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. <laughs> and then up in the uh, upper corner, you also saw Ben. He was playing this sort of weird sort of reed instrument thing, which called the, the balloon bassoon. And I think he's in there too. So Ben, if you're there, say hi to us as well. Um, but um, Erica, we're going to put the spotlight back to you because we couldn't really see much of that musical instrument that you were playing there. And I think we need, we need to find out more about what that musical instrument is. Absolutely. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that. But first, I want to start with the basics. Bash the Trash is really, really foundational, foundational, super important, also very high tech string instrument. Ta da! The rubber band. So, um, the, the, you might be confused, but let me explain. The rubber band, just like that video of the guitar that we watched, you can see it vibrating. As I pluck it, it's, it looks blurry to our eyes because our eyes don't focus that quickly. But this is the, the concept. The vibration is what's making the sound. Now, what I need to help the sound get louder on this rubber band is a box. Oh, by the way, this rubber band I got from my groceries, it was around the broccoli. So you, you may have rubber bands like that that you can save if you want to build this. This box is a little plastic box that had snow peas in it also. Lots of grocery instruments here. So I'm going to put the rubber band on this plastic box. And there's another rubber band on here, which I'll play too. But the first one, here's how it sounds now. So you start to actually hear the sound. Now there's a, another rubber band on here. So if I play them to get at the same time or one after the other, and then you can also play with tightening them and that changes the sound. 
So this is a really easy one to build at home. It can be a plastic box, a cardboard box, styrofoam box. You can even wash out like a yogurt container, put some rubber bands around that. Boom, you have a rubber band box guitar. Now, I also have an instrument that I'm excited to show you that I built yesterday. Uh, this, dun 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 dun, this is the styrofoam viola caramba, we're calling it for now. So this is a piece of styrofoam that my neighbor uh, donated to me. Um, and it, you know, it was a clean piece of trash. Um, this here is an actual violin string that I took off of my real violin when I, when I was changing the strings on that, like you do. Um, and it wasn't long enough, so I had to extend it with some fishing line right here. Um, I have a little t-shirt down at the bottom, which you'll see why in a minute helps me hold it. And this is a piece of metal that I, I literally don't know what it's for. I found it under my bed. Uh, I don't think it's important, so I turned it into an instrument. So um, I'm going to use my actual bow from my violin to vibrate the string and give you a little sense of how it sounds. So that's the styro styro styrofoam viola. Now again, as John said, styrofoam is really bad for the earth. So if you'll notice right here, there's a little hole. I had put my I put the metal post through that hole to try to find the right way to place it. And there's these little teeny tiny pieces that are breaking off already. And now these tiny pieces very often wash out into the ocean. They they act, they can get in the sewer, then out into the streams and really in, in the waterways and little animals eat them. They think it's food, they get confused, they eat them. It's really, really toxic for them. That finds its way into the food chain, becomes toxic for us. And styrofoam, we don't know how long it takes to break down and compost like other natural materials would do. So every single piece of styrofoam that's ever been on earth is still around. So we really want to try to not throw styrofoam away and instead reuse it. Now I know I'm almost out of time, so I'm going to show you really quick the instrument that I was playing in the other video. Uh, and that is one I also built here in quarantine. This is my broom box cello. Now this is of course the broom that I use to sweep my apartment with. Don't worry, I have a backup one so I still can clean. Um, this is a box that Amazon delivery came in. This is fishing wire right here, um, not a string. And this is, of course, a takeout container. And another way you can make a string vibrate is by plucking it. So that's what I'm going to do here. So there you go. That's just a little example of the broom, broom box cello. It's a little bit trickier to build, but if you have patience and you experiment, you can probably build something like that as well. Awesome, Erica. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. That was excellent. And uh, right now you can hear our dog, Roxy, getting into the act. Uh, as I said, we're at home. This is live. So not much we can do about that. I think the mailman is coming. Um, so uh, we're going to turn it over to Ian at this point and get ourselves off the camera as quick as possible um, and get Ian. So uh, we want the kids now to build some of their own percussion instruments at home. And you're a drummer, so we want you to sh show us how you build a drum set and uh, how the kids can build a drum set too. So take us through some of this stuff. So the cool thing about percussion instruments is, you know, to get it together, it doesn't require maybe as much as many, you know, materials or tools to build maybe like as compared to what Erica made, you know, she had a string that she had to tighten. And that was a pretty complex design that you built there, Erica. That wasn't super, you know, that was pretty super complicated. Whereas the drum sets, you know, that you're going to make here at home are not very complicated. It's just pretty much whatever you have lying around, which is what really makes percussion cool is that, you know, the world is your drum set at that point, you know. So without further ado, I'm going to present my Basta Trash drum set. Wow. Okay. All right. So... Mop bucket, handy dandy mop bucket. It has been cleaned first. This is my mixing bowl. I know someone's in the chat said that they have a mixing bowl that they're using as well. And this is actually the same one that I used to play 
in the, the slow jams piece that we did before. So, right? And then here's my favorite part. I put together a bunch of cans that are held together with some masking tape here. You can barely see it. But what I did is I took two Progresso cans, so just soup cans, right? And then what I did is one of them, I kind of flattened the rim. As you can see, this one is a little bit flattened as compared to this one down here. So what, they'll, what happens is they'll make different sounds now. So here's the unflattened one. And then here's the flattened one. So I was trying to figure out how I could make different sounds using the same size can. And then, you know, that's how I did it. So, and then I also have a, uh, what is this? Tomato sauce can here and then one of my dog food cans. So I put it all together, made myself a little drum set, and it sounds like this. So that's my drum set, but, but, Percussion instruments aren't only things that you hit with a stick, right? Percussion instruments can be anything that you strike, right? Or you scrape. So like a South or Central, uh, South or Central American instrument known as a guiro, right? So that's striking, scraping. And then lastly, I took two cat cans, two cat food cans, two of them, right? And then using my handy masking tape and some dog kibble, I made myself a maraca. Right? So what I like to do typically is I have one can that can do all three. Now, unfortunately, I was unable to make myself the drum set as well as having the all-in-one can. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold this down. I'm going to wait. I'm going to play this with the maraca. Let's see if I can do all three at the same time. You ready? <laughs> <All right. Yeah. laughs> Nicely done, Ian. Excellent job. I'm going to take you off spotlight, put us back on, and awesome, awesome. Okay, so at this point, I think just about everybody wants to get into the act too. So again, we- I have one question for Ian. Ian, what did you use for sticks? Oh, my trusty Sharpies. And I actually saw somebody that in the chat mentioned that they were using pencils, which is also really awesome because with pencils, if you have the eraser on the back end, you could use like the eraser on your plastic drums and you can use the, the wooden end of the pencil on your metal drums and you'll get two different sounds. So it's another way to get, you know, different, different tones out of your instruments. These are just two Sharpies. I'm using this Great. end to hit them, but yeah. So we've got uh, to chop. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Chopsticks will also work fantastically if you have a bunch sitting around. Great. So we just have a few more minutes left. Um, and again, we, what we want to do is we want to get everybody involved at home. So if you've got some cans or you've got a box or whatever, we're going to be playing you a video, which we call Thing Jam. And there's a special place for everybody at home to play solo parts. Now, a solo part is when you play all by yourself. And we're going to give you some indications during the video of how to play during this thing. Now, you heard Ian going like this, bump, 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 bump. That's part of our Thing Jam piece, and we're gonna be sharing that with you. So get all your instruments ready at home, everybody. Get ready for Thing Jam. We're gonna put ourselves on mute over here, and we hope that you'll enjoy and play yourself through the Thing Jam. We'll join you back at the other side of this and say our goodbyes.
That was so awesome. That was amazing. <laughs> I saw you getting into it with your spoons, Daryl. <laughs> I was jamming. I was jamming. I, I, I was like, I got to keep up. I got to make sure I catch my solo. I didn't want to miss my part. <laughs> Did I make the band? Did I make the band? <laughs> awesome. So at this point, we're going to say goodbye to all our musicians, and we'll give you a couple of links where you can find out more about Bash the Trash. And we're going to turn it back on over to you, Daryl. Does that sound like a good plan? Sure. And um, before we do that, we did have a question um, from Linda, uh, one of our viewers. She wanted to know, how do you purchase your cool uh, T-shirts? Where can they purchase your Bash the Trash T-shirts? That seems to be uh, something that a lot of people are interested in um, and wanting to feel like they're a part of the band. You know, the band T-shirts matter. <laughs> she can con uh, contact us through bashatrash.com, send us an email, and we will make the connection and send her a, t send her a t shirt. Right. And that's actually a good way for, for us to speak a little bit about how to get in touch with us again. There's two main ways where you can do that. One way is by going to our website, which is bashthetrash.com, as Karina says. And not only can you find out things about how we do performances in schools and online performances like we're doing here and we're doing streaming performances in other schools around the country as well, but also they can find out about building musical instruments because there's a special resource for kids there so they can build their own instruments using those instructions. And if they go to our YouTube channel, which is I just go to YouTube and type in Bash the Trash, there's a whole bunch of, of our band playing and uh, uh, instrument instructional videos so you can see exactly how to build musical instruments. And we also have live shows that we've been doing during the quarantine that talk about different kinds of things like how to photograph your food and you know how to like uh, be, deal with stress during the times of the quarantine. So you know we're trying to do a lot of different things uh, uh, on this. So two different places where you can find out information from us. Yeah, I think this is so poignant, especially with uh, the current situation with COVID having us all locked in. Um, this is something that everybody in the family, no matter your skill level, uh, can jump in and, you know, um, be thoughtful about the environment while at the same time creating art. Um, I, I want to thank you all again for being a part of this session. We truly, truly had a blast. We're going to have to get you to the museum for a live, live session um, where we'll invite you back out. Um, and for all of you viewers at home, again, if there are any questions that you have and we did not get to those questions, by all means, um, just drop them in our Facebook Live, or if you drop them in our Q&A, we will respond to you later on. Um, this has just been so much fun. I, I learned so much today. <laughs> awesome. Well, then we've done our thing right, and we hope you're going to go home and build musical instruments with your family. As we say, we're putting the home in homemade instruments. I love it. I love yes. it. <laughs> so Thank while you you're also... <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Thank you. So Thank I do want to remind, oh, sorry, I do want to remind our audience before we all sign off is that uh, we do have one more program, one more special program for you lined up. Um, of course, we are a art and science museum, if you didn't already catch that by all of our amazing programming we have today. Um, so make sure you uh, tune in to the next session, which will be uh, with Megan Douglas, and she'll be doing a virtual tour of some of our beautiful works that we have in our collection. So we can't allow you to come into the museum, but we're bringing the museum to you. So with that being said, we can't wait for you to continue to NOMA at home. So uh, again, signing off, I'm Daryl Dwayne, Bash Your Trash. <laughs> and we wanna post your pictures. Make sure you hashtag uh, Community Day NOMA um, for all of you at home who, have made, who are making, um, who are inspired today and making musical instruments based off of Bash Your Trash's uh, inspiring uh, story and inspiring uh, vision on repurposing trash. Thank you all again. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>